previously, if you wanted a vehicle to have tank steering in BeamNG, you'd have to come up with your own custom coding. But then they came out with this, and I don't know whether they've implemented it for this particular reason, or if it was something that was kind of already hidden in the background at some point, but they have made tank steering, or uh, only driving one set of wheels at a time, a lot more accessible. And when I first saw this, I was like, I have to figure this out. So having a look at the powertrain visualization, we got the engine goes into a clutch, goes into a transmission, goes into a range selector, doesn't particularly matter, a differential. Then we've got this coming out to a brake. That is a very unusual kind of fork we have here. But then it goes down to a drive shaft and then into a differential to go to both wheels. So you'll notice that these will get power, but the power won't go past here. So this is a differential here. There's power going this way and this way. And I think what happens is they break one of these to stop one side from spinning. So if you have a look, you can see that the graph is diverting the power through one way. But do you see it even clearer? Let's go in and have a closer look. So what's happening? Instead of the steering going to rotate some wheels using a hydraulic slide node, they've instead got some sort of like brake torque conversion happening. Here we can see that we've got the BRKR nodes. Then we have a controller specifically designed for brake steering. So what I can do is I believe chuck this in the chain link of our powertrain visualizer or powertrain tree. First, what I gotta do though is make a vehicle and I'm thinking we're going to make a tank. So let's grab a long vehicle and then make this out of like the heaviest clad iron stuff we can. We might make this a really old one. Yeah, so let's go with something really old V8 style. And then the heavy duty stuff make the harmonic dampener super heavy. We want this thing to rev really low and really slow. And we want this to run on low quality because I feel that this is a very old tank and these numbers are looking very promising. As for the body, immediately we're gonna make it transparent. I'm gonna go with a four, how do we, I don't know. This is a little bit tricky. I feel as if the setup was all wheel drive, but I kind of also like the look of all my phone. But to be honest, I really don't know. So I think we're going to go all wheel drive for now. I don't think it's particularly going to matter because as soon as it comes out of the transmission, I think we're going to hook into that system. It's also going to be probably a manual, something like a two speed, like a low and a high speed, and that'll probably do it. We're also going to make this one of those like tire style tanks. I don't, I don't know how to explain that. Kind of like these sorts of things, except without like turning tires that instead it, I don't know. I just, I want to make this easy for myself. Anyway, let's get on to doing this part now. First, we're going to increase the track width to make this a little bit more of a square tank. And I suppose we just start making this thing out of primitives now. Oh yeah, this is going to be a bit of a problem. Everything is invisible. Um, all right, uh, military green for now, and then make it super big. There, we have the front of our tank. That's looking good for the main body. Yeah? I, I think that's a passing grade. Now I suppose what I think we'll do is put on like those little track cover things. Little bit hard to see, but you get the idea. The sort of thing that just kind of covers up the wheels. Wheel guards? I don't know. As you can tell, I'm not really per se a tank expert. Let's look at putting a turret on now. Luckily we have this weird doodad. Scale it up. Yeah, I think this looks like it could work as a turret. Put it somewhere about in the middle. And for the barrel, we got this sort of cool looking thing here. What that does is look like it's got a bit of that uh, muzzle uh, flash hider sort of thing on the front there. I think that could work quite nicely. Then extend it out. And I don't think we want a particularly big caliber for this one because we're going to keep this as like a medium to light sort of one vehicle. I think it was also really long. So maybe this is just some sort of APC with a turret on top. Which, sure, I mean, the next thing I'm going to be asking for is portholes on the side. For those of you wondering, that was a reference to the Pentagon Wars. Why haven't I been painting this in the camo paint color? Let's, let's go do that. I'm a numpty. That is the perfect time to finally use it. Even though a lot of these ones probably wouldn't have come in camo. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's, oh, they're all really bad. I, yeah, I don't know. Scales with object, maybe? Oh, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. We have a little bit of Z fighting, so let's fix 
that up by making this a smidge a bit narrower and then changing the colors. Yeah, we don't have great colors here at the moment. I'm thinking we're gonna go in like two shades of green. I know that we're like completely out of place here at the moment, but I like the idea. That's looking great. For the name of it, I'm thinking, ooh, AUT for Australia Tank TV3. So we'll call this like Tank Version 3. So this will be like a very early tank in the Australian military. What sort of weight are we at? Three tons? I think we can make this heavier. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I can make it much heavier. It's, it's still about three tons. I also think that this is the wrong name. We should call this Armored Personnel Carrier 2. Either way, let's just send it over and see how it goes. So here we are at our secret testing area, and the UV unwrap has made the materials a little bit weird. For now, though, we're going to give this thing a bit of a try. Oh, I think we stalled immediately, but we're doing okay. Thing does feel quite lumbersome. We haven't put the tank steering on yet, but I must say, it's so far quite fun. It, do it doesn't know which gear it wants to be in. The first one or the second one? Because if you remember, I made this a two-speed because this is meant to be either crawling along on difficult terrain or at full speed. And here's the fence at the edge of our super, uh, super secret testing area. This is not Johnson Valley, no. Uh, no, nobody coming out, uh, coming out here looking for Area 51. Nah, this is, this is totally not a secret base set up by Filman Incorporated along with DARPA. This is Australia. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, let's move along. As you can see here, we have an engine into a clutch, into a gearbox, then into a transfer case. Uh, uh, transfer? All right, I'm an idiot. Then into a rear drive shaft. Uh, I'm also just realizing that this didn't export as all-wheel drive like I told it to. I think I may have stuffed up because it's not connecting the front wheels. I suppose that doesn't particularly matter for now. Oh my god. Either this thing is ginormous or my tank is puny. What the hell? Okay, so it is at least bigger than the Stan Becco. My god. My tank is dwarfed by this, like, normal American mid-size family car. Oh my god. I mean, this thing is the size of literally a ship of Her Majesty's Navy back in the day. But still, this tank shouldn't be that close in size. Whatever, let's just grab from... Oh god, this thing is a mess now. There we go, quick refresh and that's all good. Uh, I think from the range box. Then we'll grab everything all the way out to the axle hubs. And then we'll just tell it to drive the wheels that are on our vehicle currently. For this, we're going to create a uh, tank steer folder. Then I think we grab ATV brakes. Let's rename this to tank steer steer brakes then rename a few things in here and the slot type as well is also going to be tank steer oh wait i only wanted the four by four brakes this we're going to change into tank steer then looking at this we've got a few things in here this is all pretty good so the ones that are the axles i believe are these ones and these ones so those ones are left anchored to the body these all will, will probably anchor to themselves and to these uh we don't need any of the flex bodies so we can get rid of you know just the entire flex body section in the beams now now we don't need ER stuff that instead is going to be lined up to the tank stuff itself. So I think 26 and A25 work. So E2R is going to be A25. E2L is going to be A26. Replace all. Then E4R. Oh god. We've already used these nodes, so I think we're going to grab something a little bit closer, like maybe A29. I suppose I could attach to the beams on the engine. So, ooh, where's the engine nodes? A little tricky. Engine 2. Then E1L is probably Engine 3. Luckily, the name's already in there, and replace all. And then with a little bit of effort, you've finished doing this whole list, making sure that everything is good. Let's quickly refresh and then see if we can't put this part on now. 
Should be some... Oh, wait, you know what? I haven't made a slot for it yet. So under the hash code for the car, let's go into main and find our slots. We got a DCE here, which is not being used. Let's grab the slot type and plop that in here. Now, before we turn on tank steering, let's turn off normal steering. Tank steering is now going to be tank steer disc brakes. And I doubt that this is connecting to the wheels because this here is not connecting to anything. Okay, we at least have it now in here working. Mm, this becomes a bit of a nightmare. Uh, we got the engine clutch transmission range box. Let's see what we've got. We've got transmission, then we have transfer case, which is exactly the same thing, I believe. So that's good. Our transmission is here. Our transfer case as well. Uh, at the back end of that, we have input from the gearbox to transfer case. Then in the new code that we've got, where is the powertrain? The range selector should go into some sort of differential. So I think we need a differential. Trying to really grab at things at the moment. So do we have differential? We have transaxle. This does seem to have differential left and right. ATV transmission, and the next one on the list is ATV transmission high-low. This doesn't seem to have a differential right now, and we are also noticing that this is taking in different types here. Let's see if we can't find the differential here. Differential rear. Okay, we have one drive shaft, and then half shafts is what we got. Good, okay. No, these are slots. God damn it. Oh, here's our half shafts. For some reason, they're in the section for the welded and the race rear diff. I suppose this is a collection of generic stuff, and since this is the sort of thing that'll never really change, I suppose it's not really the worst thing. So what we need to do is intercept half shafts at the moment. Or potentially, since this is going to be wanting to drive out to wheels, this could prove to be a bit of an issue. What we may want to do is grab their range selector and yeah, just go with their gear ratios. Uh, and then we have two choices. We have ATV transmission, which is single range, or the dual. So I think, yeah, we're going to once again go ahead and just have the high-low range selected and grab the final drive to put in here. There we go. It seems that we also need ATV brakes. Oh, that's the tank steer brakes. Okay, good. For now, let's spawn my tank again and see that it already apparently has these things enabled for us. Tank steering, no, okay. So tank steering in now, and there is no link from the differential to this. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do is tell it to take an input from the rear drive shaft. For that, we have a transfer case, which is this slot type. And I think we're gonna put that here as this one slot type. Does that work? Okay, so we got high, low range sort of selection there and things go haywire. Is it because I had tank steering selected? Let's empty that out. Yep, okay, much better. Now we have brakes and steering, which will be the tank steer disc brakes. Oh. That straight up broke the game. Let's maybe turn that off for a second. Uh, I'm gonna have to go do some troubleshooting. I'll be back in a bit. Well, it's the next day, and I did a lot of stuff that took me really late into the night, unfortunately, but we do now have a little bit more progress. One of the first things I did was remove the slot here that we made to put in the new brake steering system, meaning now that when we go in to put our steering stuff that way, so we're gonna go first, I also wanna show that I made a front steering lock-off setup, hold on, it's here somewhere. Here we go. Name hasn't changed, but okay, good. That one should be locked. So now there's no steering whatsoever. Good. And then our transfer case, we can now go to the tank steering one. And there's only a little bit of a break, but things are working pretty well. The next step is, this is where I left it last night, is now I have to find a way to connect this to a side drive shaft. And that's a little bit tricky, especially when the side drive shafts are in the wheel hub section and not in some sort of like drive shaft section. And in here, we cleaned up a whole bunch of stuff and all, the only thing we got left in here is pressure wheels. I don't think we need this, however. I believe the only part we need really is powertrain. So I'm thinking 
We're gonna get rid of pressure wheels potentially. Then let's do the same to the rear. Now you're gonna see the whole set here. We don't need any of this like wheel hub section that has the nodes and beams, don't need none of that. All we need is this section here. Then we're gonna change this to like rear drive axles. Then I believe get rid of pressure wheels because that's made somewhere else in the game. And then we just got to make sure that this is set up right. I suppose I also want to change the slot type. Oh god, I'm having to remember from yesterday now. I think it goes in here where it calls this? No, this calls the tank steer brakes and the cam so final rear drive. I suppose we could have a look to see if these parts are in here. So engine, transmission, transfer case. Brake steering has the disc, front brake pads, okay. Maybe we now gotta put this under here. So that requires us to open up the default setup. So let's try opening Camso suspension front. All right, so this is where things get a little bit tricky. I personally was hoping to just have this so then you could grab these files and just dunk them into your mod so then this could work. So I don't want to be making custom slots like this in pre-existing code. I'm gonna see if I could figure out a way to get around having to do modifications to your code. I think I have found it. So cam sub, uh, cam so hub bearings front is what we're looking at currently which looks to be the front hub bearings. This is, I think, what we're going to try to replace. The reason why I think this is important is with the end of the powertrain tree, like tree graph sort of thing, and then we've got straight into connected wheel FL, which is your front left and then your front right. Well, if we have a look here, we now have connected wheels as well, and we don't want them to conflict with the existing ones. We have drive shaft left and right coming in here, but then it's telling us to go axle. Okay. I think I know how to do this now because this is only calling the front and rear stuff where it is also bringing in the front left and front right sort of a uh, drive. Okay, this is, it's tricky, but we're getting there. We're, we're figuring it out. What I want to do is have this slot type be what that hub was, which is Camso hub bearings front. So front suspension, front hubs, front bearings, uh, front drive axles, yes. Okay, hold on then, now let's go to rear, rear, no, rear hubs, and then rear bearings. Uh, I think it's rear drive axles. I should probably change the name of that. And then I think, I'm also going to want to get rid of rear differential as well, because that looks like it'll be a bit of an issue. So now we have engine, clutch, transmission, range selected, differential, into our lefts and rights. We've got our brakes and then into, oh, that's rear left, front left, front right, and rear right. Good. Okay. I think we now just have to remove brakes to make sure that this thing doesn't have a complete hissy fit. And... Oh my god, please work. I could... I'm driving... What, what am I driving right now? Brakes don't seem to be working at the moment. And I seem to also be lifting a wheel? It's just thing. It, it just spawns with the wheel up in the air. And I don't understand why. What happens if I drag down on the... What? So it seems that there's something magically lifting the vehicle up at the moment, which might be causing some issue. And it seems that it's those brake nodes and beams and stuff that we made. Why is engine gearbox hanging back there? Oh, you know what? I had to make sure that some more of these things were also not competing with other things. And one of the things I did, I believe, is grab... Uh, I can't remember exactly where I found it, but it's in here somewhere. Yeah, uh, engine gearbox 8, apparently, is now having a bit of an issue. And I don't know why. So I'm thinking if we add a node offset to this, potentially? All of these nodes seem to be made in here, which is the tank steering brakes, which is the tank steer brake slot. We have a look here, we got tanks, yes, good, okay, so it's a slot that we don't have to modify in original files. Specifically, we're gonna be using this sort of technicality here. 
And this will offset all nodes and hopefully flex bodies if you have that sort of thing as well. So we're just gonna open some random car that I've made previously and we will then find node offset. We're gonna grab everything from the comma all the way to the last comma, then replace the last bracket and comma, and we're going to change this to zero, this to zero, and this to zero. Now, just before we start moving along, sometimes just adding node offset will give a different offset in BMG. I don't know, it's as if it somehow wakes it up or something. I don't fully know why. Let's try moving them in the Z position by 10 centimeters. And refreshing in here, we're gonna see that those nodes, okay, so that's not really helped us much. Let's go like completely, we're just gonna go bonkers. One meter offset. That seems to be, I think it's moving us in the right direction. I can't find them. They're really hard to see. Okay, I see it. That is in the right place now, okay. It seems that I've accidentally given the gearbox its own offset. I don't know, hold on. It shouldn't have pulled that node. Um, let's get rid of these nodes. I don't think we need that here. I think that's just creating a node, but for some reason I accidentally, uh, yeah. So there's two of those nodes apparently. Gearbox eight should be nine, 10, eight over here. Good, okay. So that's fixed. All right, let's now see. We don't have any brake control. Uh, huh. We do have our drive now. Oh, we have no brakes. I'm holding the brakes fully and the car is just rolling forwards. Great, thank you. We have a controller here. I don't think that's doing it for us. I'm also seeing that it has like a brake pad front slot. That's weird. Uh, I don't have any brakes in here. Do we have brakes in here? Not by the looks of it. Maybe that has to do with like a force thing. So maybe that's not as important as what I thought. Probably what we're having issue with is brake differential steering. I think I'm going to need some time to ponder upon this. I figured it out. Finally, oh my God, this was a lot of fettling and a considerable amount of time for one Little mistake. I didn't change my torque couplings for the brake, so it was trying to brake against nothing. Our next issue is you can see the powertrain lighting up. The thing doesn't want to rotate very well, and then it burns out the clutch so incredibly quickly. I can get a little bit of angle here, and that's it. What I found as to why it doesn't like to turn very much is, you notice how this thing is very square? This thing also wants to be considerably square, so if we put the steering on, you can see now it actually wants to turn. Except, once again, the clutch burns out instantly. But you can see that this thing is much better at wanting to turn now. And down we go. Okay, so this thing apparently wants some sort of auto. I wonder, so we have a sequential which is probably gonna burn out very quickly. We have a constantly variable transmission which is also available. And then a six-speed sequential which will probably also burn out the clutch. So let's try a, a continuously variable transmission. See how that works out in this. Oh, it's not even connected now. So, oh wait, no, it is. It's just connected via magic. And the clutch and a transmission that shouldn't have a clutch is overheating. That, that makes absolutely no sense. Driving forwards, we're basically bouncing off the limiter because this thing doesn't want to keep revving. I don't understand. How does the clutch go in the vehicle? Oh, hold on. There's a clutch here. Oh, okay. I don't know how this this power graph is weird. We got engine into torque converter into drive shaft, and then magically somehow gets to clutch. I'm seeing here that we have a main engine input, which I don't think we want, and a gearbox to clutch. Um, I th yeah. You know what? Let's just try that. Give a quick refresh, and we now have no clutch, just the torque converter. But there is still some sort of gearbox in there. What happens if we, no, okay, now, now there's nothing driving us. I didn't know this thing had a CVT gearbox. Let's try getting rid of that. And if we refresh that now, we have, oh, that's wonky looking, but let's try. Good, no clutch burnout. And our vehicle wants to turn. Oh, it wants to drift as well, apparently. Look at that. We've got it working. 
Yes! Oh, this is... This is how we wanted it, right? This, like, weird stance sort of vehicle tank thing. Let's try getting rid of this offset that I added so this thing doesn't look like some sort of weird crab monster. And will it drive? It wants to turn. It so very much wants to turn. It's just not doing it very well. I think we want to lock up, lock up the left wheels. They're kind of locking up, but not enough. Like, they give away under the power of the vehicle. So... I'm trying to lock up this side brakes as well, and they also just go. I think this thing needs stronger brakes. So let's go into... Transmission, transfer case, brake pads. We've got full race at the moment, and they're apparently not doing it. Semi-race front brake pads? So let's go basic brake pads and see what that does to start with. Yeah, that doesn't particularly want to steer either, and it is also still moving the wheels. Can we grab the brakes from the default car, maybe? This seems like a bad idea, but let's give it a try. And our brake pads... Okay, we've got them selected now. And... I don't... We are kind of steering, but once again, the locked up wheels are overpowering the brakes. This is bonkers, but we are able to turn. I think the slower we go... Oh, okay. The slower we go, the better? Or medium speed, maybe? It's on liftoff. I'm finding that it's doing it. All right. Maybe if we just, uh, when exporting from automation, give super duper tough brakes, that might fix this issue. And I am hearing the brakes cook. Oh, dear. We do, however have brake tuning now. So let's find brake offset, brake wheel, gearing. Hold on, brakes are in here somewhere. I swear, I know this. Apparently I don't know this. They're not in here. Wait, why are brakes not in here? Looking at the front, we have... Okay, so brake power offset, offset? Offset should be here. Oh, they don't stay selected. They just don't work. Okay. All it's got here is pad material, but nothing about the brake force. On normal suspension, uh, the, the normal brakes that come with the vehicle, we have a brake torque value. Does this have a brake torque value? It does. Okay. This is what we need to change. I think what I want is a multiplier variable. So why not grab the variable that's here by default and then transfer that into here? I think we can chuck that probably right under controller before nodes. I meant to grab variables and we'll plop that in there. What do we do with that here? Here it's just a multiplication. So I suppose we could just grab this all together, then transfer that into here and put that there, then find the other brake torque, then paste that here and then just make that the same number, get rid of that and save. Control R, Control W, and now let's see if it's here. Brake, oh, God damn it, it's not here. Wait, no, it is. Okay, we have a brake multiplier now. Apparently we're defaulted to. All right, let's go up to like default five, which is sorry, not default five, uh, preset to five. Apparently it jumps up to six, but all right, that's fine. We are kind of, it doesn't want to turn left. So I've got hard left and I'm going to accelerate and it'll go straight ahead nearly, except when going over bumps. And now it wants to hang on that side. Okay, good. That's kind of working. Brakes are cooking though. What if I hold completely right? Same sort of thing. It really, it takes a while to grab. Let's put the race brake pads back on so then this thing doesn't cook them quite so easily. And wait, sometimes the steering doesn't work at all. I guess sometimes I have to retell the brakes to turn. Sometimes it just wants to be a little bit poopy bum. Oh, and it stops working sometimes. And now it doesn't want to turn. Ah! Brake thermals false. I know that's kind of cheating, but wait, now it won't even steer. What? Do we have brakes all together? Is that just disabled brakes? That's disabled brakes. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh God. Maybe race brakes need thermals. Let's give it a try. N no, nothing. It doesn't, doesn't want to turn. What about brakes? Braking, full braking, nothing. I'm also seeing B2R, oh, wait, what? is that? Do I, I, I should probably change that. Where is B2R? Here we have B2. 
or B2R is off to the side, just some sort of body area. I think we'll grab these nodes, which is A20 and A23. Shouldn't be too hard, so A20 and A23. And now let's see how our braking... No, our braking is... Okay, so we do have a little bit of steering. But once again, we're back to the age-old problem of they're weak as hell. I, so I, I suppose this is an early vehicle, but I don't want to hand you guys a half ass mod. I want you guys to be able to grab the files out of this and to be able to do it yourself really super easy. So if you think that's very nice of me, maybe thank me by subscribing? I think this can go up to like 50 times now and put that up to 50 times and see what happens. Hopefully, maybe. Brakes immediately start to cook. We're not really turning, though, still. And the brakes aren't enough to stop us. That's a problem. Well, I've got it working. Finally. So, I don't know what it is I did. I just went over and redid a whole bunch of different things. My table is all messed up. Well, oh, desk is all messed up. Because I was just futzing around and couldn't figure it out. But now, we can steer. I mean, it, it sometimes slows you down a little bit, so you have to ease on the steering you can't go full lock sometimes and you can see there that the wheels are completely locked the main thing that i went and did was go and increase a whole bunch of things though i think i actually undid that you know what i don't know what i did i'm I, i'm completely lost uh i went and add down the gear ratios by making them a larger number that's how it works the larger the number the more of a ratio difference there is then gave 12 times uh, the steering, brake force, all that sort of stuff. And it's come out now, and I can take it around. Hold on. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get going. Oh, this thing is a bit problematic. So let's turn off the UI and just enjoy this thing driving. This was a hell of a mod. Holy cow. I would say, though, this is probably going to do a lot better if you have uh, an automatic transmission. I wish there was like a differential torque steering, but I can't seem to find anything related to steering other than hydraulic steering. Not even the code in this one, which is related to brake steering. And that seemingly is this thing here. I can't find any documentation on this. Why? Why is BeamNG so poorly documented? But right now, my goal is to do one whole lap and get back to where we were without having to reset the vehicle in any way. So let's just try going around. Then we're probably going to go fix the uh, materials on this thing. And I've got a few little tricks up my sleeve, which I'll run you guys through. Ooh, this thing is really sloppy and doesn't want to turn. Eh, come on, just... Oh, it keeps on locking up and disengaging. This thing really would do a lot better with a... Ah! That scared the uh, holy Jesus out of oh my God, why? What is even happening? I don't understand. Uh, this is a weird one. This is a glitch I had earlier, but not in the middle of driving. I don't know why that happens sometimes. Maybe the brake force is too high? I am very unclear, but we're gonna... It happened again! Why? I think everything else will be fine. The power torque graph feels pretty decent. Oh, okay. Apparently it doesn't like to be in second gear. I should probably control that manually. Uh, Alright, you know what? I'm controlling you manually, gearbox. Because apparently, you just can't decide which gear you want to be in. Come on, go for it. What?! What is happening? Why? It seems the brakes may not be the most efficient way to get a vehicle to steer like a tank. But whatever, let's try giving it a go now. Hopefully the brakes are cooled down enough and we'll remember to do only hard steering ever and never like partial steering. Oh God, those that cooked the brakes really super quick. But there we go. Turned around. Turn again. Oh, this thing is... Playing funny buggers, all right, let's go into neutral. Turn the engine back on. I wish I could have like engine cooling for the brakes. That'd be cool. We're almost around to the start again. 600 degrees still. I don't know if we're gonna make it around this corner if I'm gonna be honest. Uh, yep, okay, we're gonna have to stop and wait for these brakes to cool again. Oh goodness. I think I, if, I, if I just turn up the thermal mass, 
This will become a little bit easier, maybe turn the cooling up a little bit. So whilst we're waiting for that to cool, basically break mass, I think we're going to turn up. And I think... Ooh, something here. Break down, no. Um, break vent coefficient. Okay, I think that one will turn up as well. All right, brakes are just under 400. They're still steaming, but let's give it a try. Uh, getting up to about 500. Doesn't mind that. It like it doesn't mind going when it's slow. So let's get moving, then steer. Okay, so the meta is go slow, then no, go even slower than that. Okay, move, break to... Okay, no, they're too hot now. Frick, let's turn brake mass up to 30 and braking ventilation to 1.9. Now let's see if this thing will still have quite such a bad issue. Ah, oh, brakes are not heating up so much anymore. Yes, much better. Is it going to have a complete meltdown though? and lose its absolute mind over this. The brakes actually seem even stronger now with a stronger brake mass. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just getting better at driving it even. This will be up in the BMG repository, by the way. So you will be able to use this if you so please. And you can, and I'm absolutely fine with it, you taking the code from this and just slipping it into your own thing. Let me point out, the only folder you should need is this one called Tank Steer and then just select all the parts like I showed earlier. I would personally like credit with your mod if you do it with your mod, but it's not entirely necessary. In fact, you don't need to give credit. You could just give like a link to my video maybe. So then we're not just relying on YouTube to be so nice as to share my video around. It has been pretty good. Oh my God, have you guys seen my channel popping off recently? That's amazing. My videos have never done so well. I've been breaking first place out of my recent videos for the like video after video, it's doing amazingly. You guys rock. What we're gonna do for this materials thing is first we're gonna open up and grab this folder directory, then file import DAE, then open this up. The first thing you'll notice that these things are squished out along here. That's because if we have a look at UV editing, bring everything up and then go to UV, no, uh, uh, import an image. Uh, so the main body of the vehicle is material 13. We can find materials here, and then we're gonna find material 13. Luckily, everything is in order. 12, 13. The normal map, no, diffuse map is the one we want. Camouflage paint, it's called. Camso underscore camouflage. So that shouldn't be too hard. There we go, camouflage paint. And we drag that in and you can see that some of these things are like stretched out. And what that's causing is a little bit of a weird as you also got like the old body on there. Let's go ahead. I just want to clean this up a little bit. So we're going to go by all by trait, loose geometry, delete that. Don't need that stuff. And what we're going to do is I think grab section by section. Oh, everything's okay. Let's just select the body then. And under UV editing, tell it to unwrap. Okay, that should give us a much better thing, though there's some weirdness in here that I'm not entirely sold on. I suppose for now we can try it out. So let's go F4 export DAE and then bring it back to here and tell it to export as that. And just with only changing the export, oh, sorry, the, uh, the UV unwrap, this should update and have a look at that, it's already done skis. That's pretty freaking awesome, I must say so. We do have a few little issues though. This and this are right next to each other, but they're not lined up properly. Let's first go M by distance, now unwrap. So it should unwrap them together, there we go. And then I'm going to do something that I couldn't do in automation. We're going to level everything out in the middle area. S, Z, which is scale on Z and zero. Then we're going to scale that out on the X axis. Then on these ones, we're going to scale that in on the X axis. And I think here we're going to scale in on the X axis a little bit as well. Then export. And in BMNG, that'll give us a little bit more of a chamfered sort of look. Now the only last thing to do is, as you can see, this thing is quite reflective and that's no good. We already knew that this thing had material 13. So in that materials file that we opened up earlier, we're just gonna turn roughness up to like 
point eight or point nine, I think will do. And look at that. Now it's no longer reflective at all. Perfect. I'm sorry this episode is really long, but I want you guys to see now what it's like to go off road with this thing. Okay. I'd like to take a moment to thank my channel members, and that specifically includes DeHellerman for being a top tier channel member. To the rest of you, uh, goodbye. I'm sorry. This is... Now we're flying. We're just... We're a rocket ship. Okay. Click another video. Maybe subscribe. What is happening?!